Thank you, Kevin. I just wanted to thank you all for coming out today. Um, I know there's a lot going on and a lot of people are scared and uh, uh, none of us really know what to think. Uh, I'm probably the the is somewhere in the middle. Uh, so we're, we're glad you're here. Uh, we're going to make a couple of changes that I wanted to explain to you right from the beginning. Want two weeks uh, or three. The first change you're going to see is that the really people. needed singers who are listed in the hymn and the program will not be here, Harriet, because of the uh, problem with the this virus the that's bag. going on uh, and her husband's age and so forth, uh, has decided to stay out until this is all over, which I encouraged her to do and agree with. Uh, so, uh, Pilgrim Singers are not going to be with us, uh, but I got on the phone immediately after I talked to Harriet and I called Melanie and Jim and I said, Help! <laughs> <laughs> and they so, said, uh, okay. They were gracious and immediately said, they, they'll step in and they're going to sing the same song. So the song in here is right, well, it's just they are not Pilgrim <laughs> Singers. So, but I think that'll be The rest okay. of it is yeah. going to pretty much be the same uh, as, as it's listed in your program in the bulletin. Um, Kevin will be doing the Irish songs right after they're done, and I will be celebrating that. My, I'm not on. It's on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 What she paid and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so I, and I wanted to let you know uh, we're not going to be taking the offering. There. There. Yes. I know. I know. No applause. That amazes me. Um, instead of taking the offering, Kevin will play the offertory at that spot. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, do the doxology as we would. But the, the offering will be taken at the close of the service. Oh. We'll have an usher at <clears throat> all the doors. You won't get out. <laughs> <laughs> See, we let you in for free, but we lock you in and you get out. No, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, there'll be an usher at all the doors, and we've sanitized the plates. But I, I passing passing the plates or whatever, uh, we're getting ready for, if, if we're able to have church on the 5th of April, which is Palm Sunday, we have communion scheduled, uh, we're going to be ordering those uh, self-contained communion things that have the bread and the, 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 the juice in the, in the same thing and pull the top off. A lot of churches use those all the time. Uh, I've never used them in my life, but uh, this might be the first time to do that. So we're, we're trying for your health and safety to get ready for all the eventualities that we, we possibly can. Uh, this probably will be the last, not probably, this will be the last Sunday we'll meet until the end of uh, the month has passed, which is, it's gonna be required this anyway. So I mean, it's, it's coming. Uh, some states, it's obviously we don't have to worry about 250, but uh, some places they're required you, if you go, uh, even if you have below 250, you have to be six feet apart. How are we going to do that? So uh, we are going to broadcast, uh, thanks to Rick Nelly, we're going to be able to broadcast our service. We're going to record it Thursday and Friday. We're going to put it online for you Sunday morning so you can go online and get it. Uh, you'll get in the mail at home a copy of the bulletin, just like our normal bulletin. And uh, we'll just make do for two weeks. Uh, if, if you can't, you know, you don't know how to pray, call me and I'll teach you. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, I know as he is. And some people I know feel uh, a that this is a, there's a lot of overreacting going on. To, to some measure, that may be true. Uh, but it's also, and let me caution you, it's also very, very dangerous. Uh, I, when people ask me about it, I tell them that... Uh, in 1918, my grandmother, my, you, you, many of you knew my mother or her mother, uh, in 1918 lost two children who would have been my aunts and uncles, Ernest and Rachel, to the Spanish flu of 1918. Uh, they were not an isolated <coughs> example. I was talking to Ray back there, and Ray's uh, grandfather died in 1918 from the flu. 675,000 Americans died in 1918, 1919 from the flu. Uh, say, oh, well, we have all kinds of medicines now. No, you don't. You don't. That's our antibiotics and many of the medications. They, we do have some antivirals that help, but there's not enough of that. They don't even have enough of the, the respiratory units that they need. I think I read somewhere there was 625,000 respirator respiration aids that they have, and they think they could need a couple million. So. Uh, we, we have, a, we have a, a monumental problem 
Uh, and I think the president and the Congress and everybody's trying to do the best they can in a, in a political year. They're still trying to do the best they can to keep us as safe as they can. But we have individual responsibility and the church has a corporate responsibility. I called a couple people last night that I know that have compromised immune systems and so on and, uh, and did something I don't know any other preacher ever had to do it. Don't come to church. <laughs> so anyway, I, 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 I don't think that, that we need to put anybody at risk and uh, I'm hoping this clears up enough that they lift some of the restrictions before uh, the 5th of April so we can still have our, our Palm Sunday and Easter celebrations. But, you know what, this, this your safety and having you around for the rest of my time here is more important to me than, than one holiday season. So uh, we're gonna do the best we can to make you safe. So next Sunday, uh, if you come here, uh, you can sit in the park and, lot and contemplate your, your life, but uh, you won't get into church, it'll be locked. And, uh, uh, but you can go online and do that. And how many of you have access to going online? Pretty, pretty much, okay. Mm. Not everybody, but almost everybody. Rick, could you tell them how they would get it? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. you're, well, turn me on. You should be on. Sure. All you need to do is go to the website, www.thecongregationalchurch.org. The, the Make sure you put in the word the, congregationalchurch.org. There is a link on the first page that says Facebook Live. Just click on that link and you'll see the uh, service live. Okay. All right. It's pretty simple. Uh, and hopefully you'll be able to do that and it'll take you, well, the whole service will be there just as if it were a Sunday morning. Kevin will be here Thursday and, and our special music will be here. Um, the message will be there. Uh, and just think, you'll actually be able to sleep during the sermon without me catching you. <laughs> so, so work out this okay? So, uh, again, we're doing the best we can. We had the whole church, uh, I had Mary called our cleaners and had the whole church sanitized, doorknobs, everything, uh, so that, you know, there's no germs or whatever around. Uh, and uh, that was done yesterday. So we're doing what we know how to do to keep you safe, and, but it seems to be a, a changing, changing thing. So, um, anybody have any questions? Or? <coughs> About the, the web, um, yes. is it only live at 10 o'clock, or can we go on at like 1 o'clock in the afternoon and watch it? Or? You, you, or you know, if, at 10 that if you want me to bore you to sleep, you can go on at 2 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? They can go on any time, right? That's right. They can go on any time. They can go on next, starting, or next Sunday morning. Uh, normally, he records it while we're here, and then he takes it home and spends a couple hours getting it ready and putting it on, so it's like Sunday night until you can get it. But that's why we're going to record it Thursday and Friday, so that you want to go to church Sunday morning and go online, and you can, you can have it at the same time as normal. So thank, you can thank Rick on your way out for doing that for you. But well, you thank him for doing this every week. Okay, and yes? Um, did you uh, cancel the breakfast on Wednesday? Thank you. Yeah, well, I, I was going to get that out in announcements. But okay. yes, the, the mission breakfast for uh, that was scheduled for this week with Chris, uh, Reverend Chris is canceled. I talked to her yesterday. She said she'd come in. <coughs> yeah, she agreed. She thought that doesn't make sense to try to risk that. So we uh, will be scheduling that again later. In the meantime, I told her we'll mail her the check. I told her the checks in the mail. She said, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about just a quick, quick couple things in the announcements, but that's, that's that. Okay, now. Sorry. No, I'm not the choir, and I am so glad to see all of you. And when Jim called yesterday, uh, my Jim and I, we felt really blessed to be asked, and we're not afraid. And you know what? Uh, we all need to be smart, however. And we are right now sheltered in the arms of God.
Guinness, by the way. Of course not. Not to be ignorant, it's also a picture, A couple of quick announcements. The uh, mission for this month is still the women's uh, ministry at the Lowell Correctional Institution, and that's Pastor Chris Schoenwolf's uh, program. Uh, some of you heard her speak last summer when I was away, and uh, she just does an amazing job and is such a, a bright and, and good uh, young lady and, and a fine pastor. And it's, it's a privilege to be able to support what she does, and I hope that uh, your, your gifts throughout this month to missions will, uh, will be generous. Also, um, the Lenten book study, which is in the bulletin, um, is on hiatus along with all the other programs and uh, uh, meetings until the end of the month has passed and we see what's going on. And I hope that uh, um, those of you who got the books will finish them on your own and uh, work on that. Uh, there is a possibility we may do one more session uh, uh, in April, but we'll have to see what happens. <coughs> Um, I announced earlier that the mission breakfast is canceled. Uh, that was scheduled for next week. If you bought tickets, uh, is, is Nancy here? I'm here? Okay, Nancy will be out in the narthex, and she'll have the uh, the uh, checks that you might have written and the money that you might have bought a ticket. I think they were five dollars, and she'll uh, she'll refund those to you if if you so desire. And uh, if you don't. We'll donate the money to the mission, whatever you want. Um, also, uh, the Blood Mobile will be here on uh, Palm Sunday if we are here. And we still don't know that. <laughs> At this juncture, I'm still hoping for April the 5th, Palm Sunday, to have church. And the Blood Mobile will be parked up at the entrance on the side there, uh, not on the parking lot, but on the grass. And if you'd like to give blood, uh, you can do so before church or after church. Um, and that's always a good thing. We, we uh, encourage you to do that. Um, the uh, teddy bear ministry is going really, really well. Uh, we've given out over 40 teddy bears so far. Uh, and uh, uh, even last night I got a request from somebody for, uh, for a teddy bear would like us to send one to somebody. Um, we're trying not to mail teddy bears because of the expense of mailing them. Uh, but uh, if, if there's no other way to do that, we will, we will take care of it. Uh, but we will give you a teddy bear so that you can, you, you can go to the post office, and I think it's for like six ninety eight or something like that, or eight ninety eight. They have those boxes. You can put as much weight in it as you want, so you can push the teddy bear in there, uh, send it off to somebody. Um, but it's going really well. Thanks to the Swingers for bringing us that idea, and thanks to all of you who have been supporting it. Uh, we are still looking for more teddy bears, so if you uh, happen to see one on sale and you want to buy it and donate it, bring it in, put it in the narthex and in the box where the bears are. I call that the bear's den. We can drop them in there. And uh, we're, we're going to be needing a continual supply of bears. I, I noticed one place that you can, for five bucks you can get a bear is Kohl's when you go out to check out. A lot of times they have stuffed animals. And, Sometimes they have bears. And the answer to the question that some people have asked is, yes, we only want teddy bears, okay? Um, no squirrels, <laughs> no foxes, okay? so just teddy bears. Um, movie night uh, is canceled. The, the, the Luther um, movie is canceled for this month. We will not have a movie. Um, in your bulletin, we have the Easter remembrances. I mentioned to you earlier that we will send out a bulletin. You'll get it in your mail uh, box, so you'll get a copy of the bulletin, which means we'll still do the Easter remembrances. There'll still be a, a, a bulletin coming to you with the communion bulletin for Monday, Thursday, and with the Easter Sunday bulletin. And uh, the, the sheet with the Easter remembrances will be in there. Uh, it's, it's really essential that we keep some semblance of normality and we keep the the uh, financial contributions coming in because just because this is going on and we can't come to church doesn't mean that the uh, uh, Seco Electric Company doesn't still want to get paid. So we, we still need to do this. So um, if you want to do the uh, Easter remembrances, we'll ask you to do that as you normally do. Also, the website name is on the front page on the bottom. Oh, good. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah, so if you, so you don't need to write that down or whatever, it's right there for you on the, on the bullet. Um, is there anything I'm forgetting, Miss Mary? Oh, uh, if you if you have um, if you're visiting with us this morning, uh, or well, no, not not just visitors. I guess you want everybody to do it. Uh, when you go out, if you go out that door, uh, there'll be a uh, a book there to sign, which kind of defeats my whole purpose of not touching people. Just visitors. Just just visitors. Okay. If, if you're visiting, the rest of you, please don't do it. Uh, because I don't want to, if everybody handles the same pen, what have I accomplished? So uh, if you're visiting with us, stop by the little platform out there and sign, uh, sign the visitor's book. Because we, we love to send a letter to people and, and welcome you. And we're just uh, glad that, uh, that you're here. Um, how are we doing with, with uh, prayer shawls? Do we need more people to make prayer shawls? Are we all right? I'm always looking for people. Okay. That's I just wondered because I know last week I dedicated four, and this week three. So I, I, I mean, I know we don't have an inning so supply. We're doing pretty good. We're doing okay. Okay. So if you if you knit and you're willing to make a prayer shawl, there is a, a pattern or a format to doing this, and Penny will be happy to help you and show you what to do. And there's also a, a certain kind of yarns that we use and those that we don't. So uh, if you'd like to participate in that, that would be. Uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, and through this whole thing, final announcement, through this whole thing uh, with the coronavirus, don't forget to pray. I mean, you know, there, there really aren't a lot of medications and there are some things that can't, can't make a difference, but prayer always works. And uh, I, I, especially for people, you know, people get upset about this, they, they get apprehensive and uh, nothing calms our heart and, and leads us to, uh, to a better place than uh, realizing what they just sang a few minutes ago, <coughs> sheltered in the arms of God, even in the midst of, uh, in the midst of this kind of crazy thing that's going on. Uh, the flowers on the altar, uh, special thanks to uh, Gil and, uh, and Libby Reagan. They, they, Reagan, they, uh, uh, we didn't have anybody signed up, which is unusual. We didn't have anybody signed up for today. And I mentioned it at Deacon's, and uh, Libby says, oh, good, I get to pick on Gil, it's his birthday. So, <laughs> so Gil, Gil has a birthday, and uh, thanks to Libby for putting the, the flowers in for him. Is this, is this 108 now? I've got to read that thing. I think, no, I think, let me, let me think. 82. Is that right? Yes. She told me I didn't. <laughs> okay, so happy birthday to Gil, and thanks to Libby for putting the flowers in. Is there anybody who's never been here before? You're visiting with us for the first time. Anybody? Right ahead. Good God. Could you tell us who you are and where you're originally from? Uh, my name's Peggy Santino. I'm from Connecticut, and I'm here visiting my brother, Bob, that has a place in the villages. Okay. Nice. All right. And so you're from Connecticut, you're surrounded by congregational churches. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. What part of Connecticut? Um, I'm from Manchester, it's like in the Harvard area. You know that? No. Well, we're glad you came to visit us, even if it is on a Sunday when hardly anybody's here. Yeah, at least we made it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it's a good Sunday because there's, there's actually seats available. So. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing is a ruse just to make more empty seats in church. Anybody else visiting with us? Where? Somebody said to you. Yeah, you. You were here before, but tell them who you are. I'm Jennifer Wolf. I'm from Roswell, New Mexico, and I'm living in heaven. You're from, you're from where? I'm from Roswell, New Mexico. Roswell, New Mexico. Roswell, New Mexico. New Mexico. 1947. Isn't that when Kevin landed? <laughs> Maybe he was there. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're so glad to be here. Great to have you back. Anybody else? Yeah. And you've been here before, though, haven't you? No? This is the first time? I'm from uh, southwestern Minnesota. Uh, here visiting my grandfather, bringing back home. Okay. So he's, he's from the frozen tundra. Mm. Uh, southwestern Minnesota. Uh, Tom, what was the name of the town that Danny and Scott lived in? Um, Don, what was the name of the town Danny and Scott lived in, in Minnesota? Fairmont. Fairmont. You know where that is? 
Yeah, my daughter and son-in-law were there. He pastored there, and she taught school there. And also Harriet, who uh, you heard me mention earlier, who does our chimes and so on. She was a school teacher during her career in Fairmont, and so uh, yeah, that's our connection to Fairmont. So. <laughs> Anything else? Hi, Billy. Hi, Jim. <laughs> you you look lovely at the fashion show. Thank you, Jim. You did a wonderful job. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. And uh, uh, thanks I? to all of you who worked so hard at that fashion show. I don't think we have a total yet, do we? No. We don't. Mr. Jim. We don't know, but uh, we did well. I, I just want to quick tell you something. Okay. I was at a luncheon on Tuesday with 400 women, and it's called a Christian Women's Connection. They meet the second Tuesday of every month. They suspended them until at least May. But anyway, what they taught us there, and I thought was very cute, and I just want to share it with you, is instead of touching, hugging, whatever, this is a hug. So I thought it would be a nice day we can sort of do this and know that we're hugged. Okay? Hey, Billy. Billy. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. She's here.
to worship him together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of all that is. We would believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree. A man of sorrows, he died forsaken. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day, he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present that his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit, life-giving breath of the church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of resurrection and of eternal life. I cannot tell.
and the love of Christ and the unity of the Spirit grow deeper and stronger in the uncertainties and changes of the life we share. May we find comfort together in this hour, cause us to rejoice, to be brave and generous, which makes life beautiful and significant. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us to verses.
first one is for uh, Carolyn Baker, who uh, attends our church and uh, has a number of health issues that she's dealing with. And we want to dedicate one and send it out to her. And this next one is for uh, Pat. I'm, I'm probably going to mess this up. It's a, a guy. His name uh, is it Pometh? Somebody help me here. What is it? Donneth. Oh, it's got a P here. Is it a D? Okay. Donneth. 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 Okay. Pat Donneth. And he's suffering with esophageal cancer. Mm -hmm. so that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So we've had people in our family have that. Um, and this one is for uh, Doris Rossini. And uh, she suffered a stroke. And she's a friend of Bob and uh, Harriet uh, Dawson. So we want to pray for her for all of these folks. So could I have a couple people come up, please? For Doris and Pat and Carolyn. Yeah, this goes with your outfits, but you all Okay, here we go. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you allow us to have these prayer shawls and to send them out to people who are going through tough times. We, we pray for this one who has a stroke and the esophagy of cancer and for all the different problems that we're allowed to call upon you to send your Holy Spirit to help these people. We pray that the prayer shawls will be for them a blessing and encouragement uh, that we remind ourselves each time that they're not magical, but they do have a power that you give to them through us and they bring love and they bring joy and they bring hope and somehow or another people who are going through a really tough time feel some sense of warmth and goodness out of them so use these prayer shawls to touch lives we pray in jesus name amen Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, you know our heart. You feel when we feel, and you experience what we experience with us. And you know the anxiety levels of our church and our community and our families are high. We don't understand this infection. We don't understand uh, what's coming next. Uh, it gives us a sense of insecurity and even a little bit of fear. But the one thing that we do know, Father, is that the shepherd, your son, is always near. Despite the fact that we as sheep may run this way and that way, and we may fear at the slightest loud noise or sound or fear, he never leaves us or forsakes us. He is in this place. He is watching over all of us and all those that could not be here, all those that are on our hearts. You are a good and gracious God, a loving Heavenly Father, and you take care of us, your sheep. We pray, Heavenly Father, today for those people around the world who have contracted this coronavirus, that you'd be with them and with their families. We pray for our nation and for all the nations of the world as they go through a, an economic downturn and crisis because of the fear that's been generated by it. 
we know that people are losing jobs and that creates all kinds of problems and a domino effect that we wonder when it will stop. We know that some of the things that we are missing and some of the things we complain about reveal just how shallow we can be. And the things that we think are important in life are not really as important as one might think. Life is important. Lives are important. Families, being able to make ends meet, are important. And so ask, we ask you, Father, to send your Holy Spirit to us. Help us through. Allow this pandemic or this terrible flu epidemic or whatever people want to call it to subside quickly so that people can go back to their jobs and back to their normal routines just as quickly as possible. We ask for that healing power which was in the hands of your son as he walked this earth to be shed through the Holy Spirit on every single person who's going through the tough time of facing the, the viral infection. Watch over our church during these days Watch over all of your houses of worship in this community. Help us to make ends meet and to move forward and to come out of the other side of this in, in good shape, maybe even better shape than we were before. Bless us, Father, as you always do. Now, Father, we pray for those that are on our hearts who are going through all sorts of problems, for this person who has esophageal cancer, for the people who are having strokes and heart problems, for all those that we know that that really just need you to wrap your arms around them and give them that spiritual, loving, heavenly hug that only you can give them, that fills them with hope and possibility, which gives them healing and strength. Help us, Father, through all of the tough times that friends and family are facing. And today, Father, we come to your throne of grace and we mention before you the first names of those that are on our hearts who need that special touch. And as we mentioned their first names, we believe with simple faith that your Holy Spirit goes to them, touches them, strengthens them, provides for them the very same power that was in the hand of your son as he reached out and took that little girl who was dead and brought her back to life, as he reached out and made the mud and put it into the eyes of the blind man to make him see that same power, Father, we ask to touch the lives of those whose names we mention before you now. A blind man sees, a lame man walks, a multitude are fed with just a few loaves and fishes. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that our God cannot do. We thank you, we worship you, we praise you for it. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, our Savior, and who is the one who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. What a great day. How many times do you come to church and we don't take your money? We'll enjoy that for about another 25 minutes. <laughs> when you leave, we'll take the offering. But I didn't want you to miss Kevin's beautiful offertory, so Kevin's going to play for us, and then we'll sing the doxology. Beautiful Irish tune, which was, which was, I saw it at the door of the violin, so I wrote it at the door. So we'll play it now, and we'll screw you all. <laughs> <laughs>
We thank you that we are able to place before you and into your hands the wherewithal that we have been given to reach out and touch a hurting world. We ask that the gifts that we will give today would be used to bless lives and heal families and provide for children and allow your word to go forth from this place to touch many. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Can you be seated, please? <coughs> Friday we had our, our fashion show and uh, Carol um, was here uh, Brooks and did a wonderful job as a model and I guess she got home and she and Bob were talking and Bob decided that until this whatever it is virus scare is over uh, that he'd like to step aside from, from reading so he called me Friday and said that he would be back but not until all of this passes over, so um, I will read to you today. And uh, normally, Bob reads from the uh, New International Version, and uh, the first portion of Scripture that that I asked Bob to read uh, is actually from the uh, New International Version he would have read. But I'm, I'm going to read it from the King James because there's just a couple of things in the Bible that. I grew up with the Revised Standard Version, remember that one? And, uh, and then there are some things that I, I just always loved the language from, from the King James. And uh, uh, you'll, you, can, you can read it from the, uh, from the this is the New International, because when I, when I made the slides, I made them for Bob, so that's New International. But I'm not gonna read, you'll see what I'm gonna read is not what's up there. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Going along, like preachers do, I'm going a long way around the barn to get to the point. <laughs> so anyway, but this, this, is the, uh, this is the 23rd Psalm from the King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just something to me. So much nicer about the King James in some of the Psalms. And then the, uh, the next portion is uh, John, and I'll just read this right off the screen to you. Uh, John chapter 10, verses 14 to 18, this is a portion about the Good Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have no other sheep, I have other sheep, that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Next page. That's it, Jim. That's it? Oh, it stops there? I'm sorry. Okay. That's it. Thank you. 
He came with specific instructions. Use it wisely. My grandmother said, it is only for the most special occasion. It had been a gift from her mother, who told her the same thing. Only for the most special occasion. I held it for years, not knowing what could be special enough for this. Until... It was six days before Passover. He was reclined, his feet towards me. Around him, his followers. I too was a follower. At first at a distance. But he invited us. The women, women, really everyone, to come near to hear stories of God's curious kingdom. That night, I gathered my perfume from its safe hiding place. The room crowded with men. No one noticed me. Without hesitation, I broke open the lid of the bottle. The perfume drenched his feet. With a slight smile, he looked at me. And then, I did something I had not planned. I covered, I covered his feet with my hand, washing them with my tears. I had no choice. He was Messiah, worthy of anointing. This, this was the celebration that everyone hoped for, of who we hoped for. I kept the bottle and the memory. The perfume was not wasted. He, he was the most special occasion. spoke to Moses from the burning bush, God himself was in him. He and the Father were one. He and the Father were of like mind, like substance. They were one. And then he goes on to describe himself throughout the New Testament, which is what we've been doing in these Lenten messages, talking about himself as, as the I am. And the night this this week we're going to be talking about him as I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The shepherd theme and the sheep theme and the flocks are all through the Old Testament and New. It's one of those golden threads that weaves its way through all of Scripture. You remember that as Jesus is born and we celebrate this at Christmas time, we say that he's the a son of David. And what was David? David was a shepherd. David was just a shepherd boy, one of the brothers, the smallest of the group, not very much uh, thought to be uh, kingly material. But that little shepherd boy became the slayer of Goliath and the king of Israel. And from the line of David comes the I Am, the Good Shepherd, the Messiah. He made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. He is the shepherd, and we are the sheep. We are his flock. We are the helpless sheep. Dawn was telling me in her devotions that she was reading this morning, there was a section about sheep and the shepherd. And in that 
little section she was reading, it talked about the helplessness of sheep. I, I, I know that when Dawn was a young girl, they used to go out in the fields of Pennsylvania doing something called cow tipping. <clears throat> they go out there at night and they tip over a cow, and the cows can't get back up, so the farmer had to go out there and find the cows and put them back on their feet again. But if you did that to a sheep, a sheep can't get back up again. A sheep would die if somebody wasn't there to bring it back up. And so when the sheep fall, or the sheep topple over, the shepherd has to bail them out. The shepherd has to come and sit them back on their on their feet, hand, their feet again and, and get them back on, on the straight and narrow again. Just as God does with us. When we fall, he picks us up. If we didn't have God there to do it, we would be lost. I often think of this when, when I have a funeral service and uh, when I was in Michigan, we did 800 funerals and some of the families that we would minister to and, and meet with had no church experience, no faith in God, didn't have a clue what I was talking about. And I'm telling you, they always had more pain. They had nothing to fall back on, nothing to pick them up, no shepherd to sit them back on their feet and help them move on. It, it, it's so valuable, this faith that you have, this belief that you have, this shepherd that is yours in your life. Sheep, like us, we have a tendency to get into all kinds of trouble. I mean, we just can't help it. We just wander here and there. You know, sheep are not the smartest animal in the world. They're pretty dumb. And humans being looked at as sheep in the scripture makes a lot of sense because if you look at humanity and you look at the world and the way it operates and the things that happen in our world, we're not all that smart either. So we need a shepherd. I mean, or we'll wander out on the road. We'll get ourselves in trouble. We'll fall into pits. This is a, a scene in Ireland where the sheep are wandering down the road, just right out in the middle of the street. They just go wherever they want to go, at the speed they want to go. They, they wander around when cars need to get through. It's kind of like villagers in the traffic circles. <laughs> You'll notice I bring that up quite often. Don't you? <laughs> might, might just be one of my pet peeves, but anyway. So the sheep are, are always getting themselves into some kind of a bind. But God, like the farmers in Ireland, marks us by his Holy Spirit. He puts his spirit upon us. We become his. We know his voice like the sheep know the shepherd's voice. That still small voice within us. We understand it. We feel it. Well, in Ireland, this is how they mark the sheep. It's amazing. You, you see the sheep on the hillsides and in the fields, and, and they have these different colored markings on them, these dyes they put on them. Uh, some will be red, some will be blue, some will be red and blue, some will be yellow, green, all different colors. And depending on the colors on the sheep, the farmers know that's their sheep because they all wander together. They just run around on the hillside. But they do hear the voice of the shepherd. They do understand and respond to the instruction of the shepherd. When we were in Ireland, we stood at the bottom of a hill and we watched a guy who was a, a professional sheep herder and he had a little whistle in his mouth, kind of like those old bird calls we used to have when I was a kid, you put in your mouth out of membrane. And these sheep were on this huge hill and they were all gathered around at the top of the hill and he would take this little thing and he'd make a specific sound and half of the sheep would run down and stand over here far to the right, and the other half would stay where they were. And then he'd make another sound, and the other half of the sheep would run down to the left and stand over here. And then he'd make a, a, another separate sound, and then all the sheep would run back up to the top of the hill again. And then he'd make another sound, and like two or three of the sheep would come running down and stand right in front of him. And then he'd make another sound, and three sheep would go over here, and three sheep would go over there. And with every sound, the sheep would know those sounds, and they would respond to those sounds, and they would go to the places that they were assigned to go when they heard that sound. They knew the sound of his voice, and they knew him. And they would respond and do what they were supposed to do. It was an amazing display, and I never saw anything like it before. So Jesus is the good shepherd. He, he's the one 
issuing the sound, issuing the gospel, issuing the, the word of his father to us. He is the good shepherd. What did he mean that he was the good shepherd? Scripture says, and behold, a man came up to him saying, teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, eternal life, keep the commandments. The goodness is not in us. The goodness is in him. The goodness is in his voice. When we hear his voice, when we know his gospel, when we follow what he has instructed us to do, we stay out of trouble. We, we go the right way. We go beside the still waters. We understand the green grass. We're fed and we're cared for and we, we have success in life. So the, the sheep understand the shepherd who is good, not in and of himself, but because of the gospel itself. Kalos is the Greek word that means good and it describes that which is noble, wholesome, good, a beautiful, it's the character of God, and he alone is good. God is good. So the good shepherd, the good shepherd is Jesus. He is God in the flesh. He is good. And Jesus is saying, only one is good, meaning his father. And he too is one with the father. So his goodness, the good shepherd, comes from that. The other thing besides him being good is that he protects he protects us. And so if, if in this crisis that we're in with this coronavirus business that, that has everybody in a, a frenzy from worrying about uh, going out anywhere or being around people to uh, Dawn and I were in Publix the other day and we walked in. All the aisles were full of good stuff and all the regular canned goods and the soup and the meat counters were falling off until we got to the toilet paper aisle. <laughs> What is it with toilet paper in this crisis? Seriously. I mean, you know, what are we building a fort out of toilet paper rolls to protect us? I mean, come on now. Uh, well, Jesus does protect us, not with toilet paper, but he is the good shepherd and he protects us in the midst of all crisis, in the midst of the worst situations in life. Sometimes the danger is around us. Sometimes he has to fight off the danger for us. But he does protect us. And you know elsewhere in the scripture, we didn't read it this morning, but elsewhere in the scripture it says that he is in the sheep gate. He protects us and he sits in the sheep gate. And this is a, a, a picture of a, a mock-up of an old-fashioned Palestinian uh, time of Jesus' first century uh, corral for sheep. And during the day, they'd wander on the hillsides and they'd call the sheep in, just like my Irish guy did with uh, his whistle. And they'd bring the sheep in and they'd all run into the, into the sheep pen, the pen. And he would sit like this little guy is in the picture here. They would sit in the, in the gate so that no predators could come in and get them, so that none of them would wander out in the middle of the night and, and get caught by a predator. So, the shepherd protected the sheep by sitting in the gate, by standing or sitting between them and danger between them and, and fast running floods or waters or whatever, that, that shepherd would sit there in that gate all night long and protect them, risk his own life to protect the sheep. He protects us. I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. You know, despite the fact that life sometimes gets tough, and you know, <clears throat> I thought about this with this crisis, people are saying, do you realize that, that I can't go swimming? Do you know that they might close the golf courses? Why, I, I'm not sure, but the restaurants may have to close. I might have to sit in my house for two weeks 14 days I might have to suffer in my air-conditioned house with my 80-inch TV, with my ice maker refrigerator. How will we manage it? Seriously, I mean, we are ridiculous. I mean, we don't even know what it's like to suffer. 
1918, when the uh, Spanish flu epidemic hit, my grandmother lost Ernest and Rachel, my aunt and uncle, but they were still babies because of that flu. And other people's families will not just be inconvenienced by having to stay home or missing church or having church canceled. Some people's families in this crisis will lose a loved one. People have died and people are going to die. In 1918, they were stacked up the bodies like cordwood. There were so many deaths, 675,000 in America alone. Over 30 million worldwide. So this is nothing to be flippant about. This is scary stuff. We need the protection of the Good Shepherd. We need to believe and have faith that in the worst of times, He sits there in the gate to protect us. And if bad things do happen, He will pull us out of the miry clay. He will pull us out of the pit. That's Psalm 30 says. When we place ourselves under the care of Jesus, our life is safe with him. You say, but what if I die? You're going to a good place. He still will not leave you or forsake you. He will never let go of you. Not one will be snatched from his hand. Neither will you. He guides us. You know, the, like I told you about the, the shepherd whistling and sending the sheep where he wanted to send them. Uh, they also call them in at night and they, and they come running. Uh, for one, because of the shepherd's voice or whistle, but another because they want to eat and drink. <laughs> but the sheep, the sheep listen and they're guided and they're directed. And the same thing should be true of us. You know, it's a stupid sheep that stays out there where the wolves are in the dark. And it's a stupid person who has the guidebook with the instructions of how to live and stay out of trouble and yet does what they want to do and stays out there in the dark on their own. We, we have this simple way of living, of doing good things and good deeds and obeying our Father and following the guidebook and believing their commandments and not suggestions and staying out of trouble. But we choose to not always allow Him to guide us. He wants to. He will, if you'll just let Him. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. He restores us, he leads us, he directs us, he keeps us. Jesus shows us a better way to live when we follow him and he will be glorified by it. And he cares for us. You know, there's that old hymn, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. And no one ever will. No one ever will. Human relationships and human interactions, if you're lucky, it works. If you work hard at it, it works. But no matter how hard you work and how hard you try and how hard you invest yourself, sometimes, and some of you know this, it just doesn't work. But with Jesus, it always works because he cares for you. You have his promise. When he makes a covenant with you, when he stands at the altar with you, when you come to him, he never leaves you or forsakes you again. He's always there. You get sick, he holds your hand. You're dying, he's there beside your bed. He never wanders off. Even a tea time won't keep Jesus away. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. You're his flock. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. He provides exactly what we need to grow in our faith. And finally, this shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The Good Shepherd, Jesus, lays down his life for the sheep. And that's, that's what this season of the year is all about, reminding us that he made the ultimate sacrifice. For us, the sheep, he, he not only sat at the gate, but he got out and he allowed himself to face the enemies coming against the sheep and to die so that we would live. We uh, have a... A Jesus who never leaves us. Jesus showed his love for us by leaving heaven, entering humanity, living the perfect life, paying the price for our sins. By dying on the cross, he rose again and ascended into heaven. He made the ultimate sacrifice for his sheep. This picture in the background is one of my favorite places in Ireland. It's an abbey, 
and there's a reflecting pond behind the words that you can't see it. And this was built by a man who so loved his wife that he built this just for her. And uh, she passed away early and he built a beautiful mausoleum and a chapel there. And, and it's just, it, I mean, you walk it and you hear the story and, and it, it just shouts love. It shouts care. It shouts commitment to another person. And uh, it's just an absolute gorgeous scene, summer at, or uh, every season of the year. In the winter time, when there's a light snow, it's just all so pure and beautiful looking. It's, it's amazing. Over the course, the church has owned it, and, and after this man died, and, and, uh, it's, it's just become a, a magnet for people. There with his father, he intercedes uh, on our behalf so that we can uh, enter into a relationship with God. Jesus rescued us, laid down his life for us, his sheep. It's a love story, just like this Abbey is a love story uh, between us and our Heavenly Father. He was the gentle shepherd that we were trying to sing about. He is the, the one who, who gives his life for us. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us, for we need your strength from day to day. There is no other we can turn to who can help us face another day. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. In the midst of this coronavirus thing or whatever else it is you're going through, this should be your prayer. Gentle shepherd, the good shepherd, come and lead us. Come and wrap your arms around us and love us through this time. Help us to make it because we can't face another day without him. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent your son, that he is the good shepherd, that he is the one who can help us to face each day that comes our way, and that one day he'll take us by the hand and yank us to our feet after we've fallen down, and he'll take us to a place so beautiful that it will make that happy pale by comparison. It'll be so amazing and so wonderful that will wonder why we had to stay here this long. So for all those who are afraid, for those who are apprehensive in this time of uncertainty, help us to reach out to the shepherd, the good shepherd, the son of our heavenly father, Jesus the Christ. In his name we pray, amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Let's sing two, I think there's three verses, but let's sing two. Okay.
presence of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. Wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you do, there God is. Thanks so much for coming out and uh, braving the virus. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks to Kevin. For